Okay, so we have done, together we have done some calculus, right? Um, now here in Ontario, uh, what we have uh, is a requirement for students to take uh, grade uh, nine all the way up until grade 11 math. You're not required, uh, in order to get your high school diploma, you're not required to take grade 12 math. And grade 12 math involves, you know, data management, calculus, uh, uh, advanced functions. I hope I'm not missing anything. Uh, there's a vectors component in uh, calculus. Uh, but my hope uh, is that I could work on, you know, grade 11 math. And um, those uh, of you, you know, out there that are struggling um, can consider uh, doing not only grade 12 math, but you'll find that a lot of uh, programs in university actually require calculus, right? Calculus in English was what I found uh, back when I was applying to university in 2007, right? So, um, yeah, so my hope is to do some grade 11 math with you, and uh, hopefully it can start to make a little bit of sense, right? So in this first video, I'm just going to do basic um, uh, function, uh, you know, intro to functions, let's just call it. Uh, so, so this course, I believe, is called Functions, right? And this exam review, all of these exam reviews that I have so far uh, up until this date, which is November 16th, uh, all of these exam reviews are taken from somewhere else, so I'm going to link uh, to those exam reviews if you want to have a look at them. Um, but yeah, and I'm using uh, the program Zernal because I'm a huge uh, Linux guy. Uh, so I'm using Linux right now. It looks like a, a you know, a paper, right? A lined paper. So this, this is actually pretty cool. Um, okay, so off we go. So it gives us uh, a function, right? So we've got our function for part A. So this is 1A. So it says, given a function f of x equals 2x squared minus 3x plus 5, determine each value, right? So if it says f of 2.4, right, all that means is everywhere where you have x, put brackets, 2.4, and apply whatever move they want you to make, right? So you got to square whatever input they have, right? So you got, let's see, you've got 2 multiplied by the square of the input minus three times the input itself plus five at the end, right? So I finish it off by putting five, all right? I'm not gonna actually use a calculator for this, so you just gotta use a calculator and figure out what this is, but that should be your final answer. Okay, now this might be easier to do, right? f of negative three, okay? Um, because it's not a decimal, it's a whole number. So, um, Let's see, two, and again, I square the input, right? And then I take away three times that input and then add five at the end. Nothing's changed, right? Now there's a reason why I'm using the word input and you're gonna see with the next example. Now the square of negative three is nine. So we've got two times nine here, right? And a negative and a negative make a, that's right, a positive. So we've got a positive nine, right? And be careful, this is not 2.9, this is 2.9, two times nine, okay? Plus five at the end. So we've got 18 plus nine plus five, okay? You see if I can scroll down on this. I don't think I can. So let's see, boom, okay. So what I got here is I've got, uh, what is it, 27 plus five is that 32? Okay, double check, should be 32. Um, next, we've got uh, f of x um, plus one, okay? So the reason why I said input is because it's much easier when you're dealing with inputs like this. So it seems like students get so trapped, right, with, with um, the idea of, you know, first you start with just x, right? And then all of a sudden when you add x plus one, they get really trapped and it gets really confusing. Um, so that's why I love putting brackets, right? Every single time, minus three times our input, right? Plus five. Now, granted, yes, you do have to do some FOIL and expansion right here, but the input is clear. The input is not just x, it is x 
plus 1. So this serves as input, not just x. So I can even rewrite it if I want as 2 times input squared minus 3 times input plus 5. The reason why we don't do this, right, is because um, is because it's longer, right? You don't want to write input like so many times, right? So that's what I love doing. I, you could even change the letter if you want. You could put like A instead of X and then that might be clearer for you. But anyway, so we got two X squared plus two X plus one, okay? Minus three X minus three plus five. And then we got to simplify this sucker, right? So two X squared plus four X plus two, minus three x, uh, negative three plus five, that's positive two, okay? So we've got two, right, plus two, and that's four, and we've got four x minus three x, four apples minus three apples is one apple, positive one apple. So two x squared plus x uh, plus four, and that is our final answer for part A or for question one. Okay, now let's see. Um, now let me restart this page. Okay, so we've got our first uh, set of solutions. I thought of maybe saving these to a PDF, but you know what, it's no big deal, right? Okay, so state the domain and range of the following relations and state whether the relation is a function or not. Okay, so when they say stuff like that, right, it literally just means um, do they pass the vertical line test if if it is plotted, right? Um, if it's not plotted and they give you like some relation like this, right, for part C, right, you can't really use a vertical line test, right, unless you draw it first. So we'll get to that. Um, so let's state the domain and range for, for number two. Okay. Um, so the domain, right, in this case is going to be x, uh, there, there's this usual uh, way to write it, but I just literally do this like an interval, right? So uh, x is from negative four to positive four, right? That's the first part for part A, right? So it goes from negative four to positive four, and these filled in dots means mean that you include negative four and four. If it had holes, right, if it had like points like this, then that would uh, take away this little line at the bottom, right? Okay, now the range is the same thing except it's for the, that's right, the y values. Um, in this case, I have the lowest value at negative two, highest value at four, okay? So I do uh, negative two, okay, and at four. All right, so that is a part A. Let's look at part B really quick. Okay, so we've got a quadratic that has been inverted, and we're going to talk about inversions. All right, so domain, right? Domain, and uh, we look at the x values. So the, the first x value, right, is right here, right? What's that x value at the y-axis? That's right, the x value is zero. So x has to be at least, at least, or equal to zero, right? No, actually, no, actually that's redundant. So we should just say at least zero. That means this, okay, cool. And then we've got range. And for range, right, we can do any value of y because this guy goes on forever. So it's gonna extend forever, okay? So all real numbers Now, the reason why we say real is because there are imaginary numbers as well. Uh, now, this obviously for a philosopher, this might seem really weird, but anyway. Okay, um, so run with it. So uh, to state whether it's a function or not, does it pass the vertical line test? So I'm just going to write function, question mark, right? I'm just going to write yes or no. So for part A, does it pass the vertical line test? Yes, it does. Okay, those aren't vertical lines, but anyway. Yes, it does. Very clear to see there. Here, does it pass the vertical line test? No, we get two points, okay? So for every x, you only should get one y value. For this case, you get two, right? Now what about a basic quadratic, right? 
for a basic quadratic, right, non-inverted parabola, excuse me, I should probably use my words more accurately. For a non-inverted parabola, you only get one point every time. That is a function. This guy is no bueno, it is not a function. So we've got no over here, okay? So for part B is a no. All right, let's see. Uh, to answer part C, we've got to go back to part B. Okay, I'll show you why. So to answer part C, we got to go back to part B. When you've got a quadratic like this, right, I'm going to estimate its functional form. It's probably just y equals. So for part B, right, the functional form was plus or minus root x. Okay. Had I just put root x, this guy would have looked like this, okay? And it would have passed the vertical line test. But because I have plus or minus, the minus covers the bottom, and that's what makes it a, not a function anymore. So if we go back to part C, notice there is no minus, it's just the positive root, right? So this plot, will actually look like, you know, it'll it'll be some, it'll be uh, shifted. If you haven't covered shifts, we'll cover it. Don't worry, uh, three, four, five, I'm like screwing myself here. Anyway, it'll go like this. And so when you pass the vertical line test, uh, when you, sorry, when you uh, do the vertical line test, it will pass, right? Now, had I put this, it wouldn't have passed. But because you only have the positive square root, it passes. So yes, this is a function to start off, right? So yes, it is a function. Now to get the domain with square roots, it's very easy. So domain, okay, um, is the following. Whenever you have a square root, inside the square root, you can never have, that's right, a negative. So it has to be a non-negative value. And what that means is greater than or equal to zero. So whatever's inside, make it greater than or equal to zero. So x will be greater than or equal to four. Okay, that's the domain. The range, on the other hand, okay, is going to be, um, so you have to look at the lowest uh, value you got, right? Now, um, the lowest value that we will have uh, in the y should be, um, so if x is greater than or equal to four, right, then the lowest value should be, uh, let's see, y equals uh, four minus four plus five, so we get five. So y has to be greater than or equal to five, and it's gonna keep going, it's gonna keep, keep increasing, right? So y is greater than or equal to five. Notice we can't plug in like zero here or one or two or three or 3.99. The reason is because you will get a negative inside the square root and that is no bueno, okay? Not good, all right? So, um, all right, last one. We've got a quadratic, okay? Now I know it's a quadratic because it's um, uh, what is called a vertex form, right? Ah. Should I add more room here? This is a square, okay, don't be confused. Now, this is a quadratic. Now, I know where the vertex is for a vertex form quadratic. It's, this is the uh, the p value, this is the, uh, you know, k value, or however you call it, but the quadratic will have a vertex at negative 13, negative 22, okay? Negative 13, negative 22. Um, for a parabola, right, they extend like this, so all x values, are good, okay, all x values. So um, domain is all real numbers, okay, write that down. The range, however, right, it depends on whether or not it opens up or opens down, right? You gotta ask yourself that. Now, how does this guy open? Well, you can tell by the number in front of the perfect square. The number is negative. So this sucker will open downward, right? So what is the maximum value? That is the y value of the vertex, okay? So let that sink in, because the vertex is right here at the very top, 
right? So the y value should be the very max or min value depending on what the a is. Now a is negative, so range will be y at most negative 22, okay? And that's my range. Now is it a function? Well, it's a parabola, so if you keep passing, if you keep passing lines through it, it's going to pass the vertical line test, so you're good. So yes, it is a function. Okay, so that is an intro to functions. And next, what I'm going to do in the next video, okay, is I'm going to cover um, transformations, right? So that's the first part. This is just an intro to functions I just did. Transformations, um, inverted functions, right? Um, and uh, yeah, things of that nature. So, uh, and then I'm gonna do expansion, simplification, uh, state restrictions, stuff like that. Um, yeah, and then it talks about converting uh, to uh, vertex form from standard form. So we have an example here, right, that I'm gonna cover, right? Oop, sorry. Still getting used to this tablet stuff, okay. So this is a standard form quadratic because it can be written as ax squared plus bx plus c, right? And we're gonna convert it to our vertex form. All right, so this is all in the videos to come. So please uh, continue to watch, continue to support, like, subscribe, share, whatever you need to do. Uh, we really appreciate you being here and we thank you so much. Have a good one. Bye.